The doctor instructed the patient to take <coughs> one pill every day and walk one mile every day and call me in one month. At the end of one month, the patient called the doctor very agitated. Doc, what do I do now? I'm 30 miles away from home and I am out of pills. <laughs> What do I do now? <laughs> Will you pray with me? <coughs> Precious Jesus, we thank you that you are indeed with us, that you care for us in every moment. Let us truly cast our cares upon you and follow you where you lead. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight, you who are our inspiration, our strength, and our song. Amen. I understand from some people who are way, way better at classroom management, because that's sometimes what it's called when you're a teacher, that have skills in classroom management, that there are things that you can do to get the whole class's attention. I personally might have a little bit of uh, trouble with that, but sometimes it involves getting the whole group used to when you say something, they will say something back. And that seems to click everybody in at the same moment. And depending on which grade or what seems to be particularly appealing to that group of students, there are a variety of these kinds of things that can be said. Things like, Scooby Dooby Doo! And the answer or response is, Where are Where you? Are you? <laughs> things like, Ready, set, you bet! Or, Ready, set, go! go. One I don't think that I would be too uh, responsive to, let's say, but it would work in the Harry Potter world. Hocus pocus, time to focus, or everybody focus. Uh-oh, uh -oh, we can try that one. Which one do you like the best? Time to focus, or everybody focus? No, time to focus. So let's try it. Hocus pocus. Time to focus. All right, when, you know, it's not just in schools that we have this going on. If you have ever been part of a gathering that is focusing on standing up for justice and making peace, there's usually a fair amount of sitting, standing, or marching that goes along, walking, whether it's a few feet or a mile or two two or who knows how far and you hear also that call and response those of you that served in the military if you're trying to get your miles in and formation there's going to be some kind of song or some kind of chant or some kind of rhythm to it if we happen to be around any of the gatherings the last couple of days for justice with peace <coughs> It's very classic to hear, what do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. now. And no justice, no, no peace. peace. I, it may be that there was a call and response that went like this. What does democracy look like? This is what democracy looks like. What does? Do I say look like this is what 
democracy looks like, and you can see that I need some uh, choir members to help me get <laughs> <laughs> oh, right? Because we have one that, that kind of has gone around here once in a while, and I'll just mess it up. So I'm going to be pleading for some help because it, we start out, and I've heard it grow and grow and grow here, depending on the voices that join in. It's on one of our banners. Thou, O oh Lord, art a shield about me, my glory, and the lifter of my head. You notice that I'm refraining from beginning to sing that. <laughs> <laughs> Thou, O oh Lord, art a shield about me, for my glory, and the lifter of my head. Before he even gets to 
Andrew and Simon, who will be called Peter, and James and John at their fishing boats and nets. Even before that, he's picking up, as the scripture is telling us here in Matthew's Gospel, that he's already saying, change your life. The kingdom is here. And then he goes, a knock, knock, knocking on, we would say heaven's door. He goes, not either, no, what? He goes walking up to these people who are doing their day to day jobs, and he makes a promise. I'm going to teach you a different way to fish. I'm going to teach you a different thing to do. And Matthew tells us they do what? They stop what they're doing and they follow. It's pretty darn amazing. But that is the account that we receive of the beginning of Jesus' ministry. And it goes on to say that when they follow, Jesus goes along <coughs> proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and affliction and sickness among the people. The good news of the kingdom. I'm not sure today what that good news of the kingdom might be for each of us, but I know that one of the distinctive, distinguishing characteristics is that wholeness, that feeling that in body and mind and spirit that all is well. It doesn't necessarily always mean physical cure this side of heaven. But it can mean a feeling really within ourselves that all is well, no matter what ripples and things are happening on the surface. Does it mean for each one of us that we're to literally drop everything and follow? Oh, folks, that's between each of us and Jesus and our community of faith. Because I'm comforted sometimes by some of the theologians who like to point out to us that each one of us has a vocation to some form of life work. To some form of life work. And many of you here have vocations you've fulfilled as your life work. But what we also remember is that beyond that call to life work, everybody, each one of us who wants to count ourselves as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus, as one who claims the promises, and has heard Jesus today promise us, follow me, I will teach you a different way to fish, a different thing to do, that we each have that call that's behind and undergirds the call we have to our vocational life work, that we all have a vocation to be fully and deeply human in Christ Jesus. Isn't that an interesting thought? Not to be fully and deeply perfected, not to be fully and deeply Jesus-like, to be fully and deeply healed and whole, although that's certainly the progress and the next step and the direction we want to be going, fully and deeply human in Christ Jesus. Wow. That's kind of a tall order right there. And so part of what we get to do together is to listen carefully for that call that Jesus places on our hearts, those nudges that we get. And when they're repeated, and we might think that we're on that path, we count on the community to let us know, is that something there? Is that, is that where we're headed? Or are we a little confused? And we also really choose to cling to this promise that Jesus is making, that, he, that the call and the promise that if we change our lives, 
that we change our lives, that the kingdom is 